So before I begin, I request you all to just close your eyes, relax. I'm going to take you on a short journey through sound. Tamaso. Now, in under a minute, we went on a journey through sound. We went from the tropical plains of India to the sandy deserts of the Middle East. Even though these two pieces of sacred music that I just presented are separated by over 15 centuries, they're united in sound. They're united in the notion of what divinity embodies. They're united in a singular melodic philosophy, which we in India understand as the Raga, and which the Middle East understands as Makam. It's this shared ancestry of sound, images, culture, and symbolic meanings is what I want to highlight and showcase through my cultural diplomacy project the dialogues with the divine. As a singer of sacred music, I was confronted by a very essential and significant question. What is the role of sacred music in a largely religiously polarized world? What's the role of sacred music in a culture and society where ethnicity and tradition is often seen as an opposing force to the notions of individual liberty. And after much thought, I felt that the best strategy was to use these relics of the past as ammunition for cultural diplomacy, to use them as vehicles and catalysts for transformative experiences through music, and to use them to bring people together rather than divide them on the basis of race, ethnicity, and culture. And I wanted to do it in a way that was informed, that was meaningful and revitalizing to all the communities involved. In December 2013, I opened up the skull of a white albino rat in my lab. And I introduced an artificial stroke through his middle cerebral artery. And bizarrely enough, the rat seemed to be humming a melody as if he was soothing himself all through the experiment. And my coworker, who was clearly high on the vapors of isoflurane floating around in the laboratory, said, oh my god, now that's a beautiful musical stroke. And in that instant, with, those play of, with that play of words, he seemed to connect the dots in my life. Up until then, I was leading the dual life. I was dissecting rat brains during the day and dissecting melodies by night. And in that instant, somehow, the path to the future seemed to flash in an instant 
in front of my eyes. As they say, when the teacher, when the student is ready, the, t the teacher emerges, and with his idea of musical stroke, the path, my, my path into the future became quite clear. So it became clear to me that I was interested in the culture of musical strokes. I was interested in the cognition of musical strokes. I was not quite satisfied just studying strokes in rats, musical or otherwise, and that I wanted to study the alchemy of sound, the alchemy of sound through performance, through cognition, cognitive studies, and through the study of music as an integrative, neuro, cultural, biological, cognitive transaction. And without further ado, I went ahead, signed on the dotted line, I gave up the stability of a, of a job and a stable paycheck, and, um, and the promise of tenure um, at Harvard Medical School, and I enrolled in the Masters in Music program at the New England Conservatory. And now, my world was filled with people having many musical strokes, from bebop to classical and beyond. In the same year, I founded the Carnatic Alchemy Project as a platform to create transformative experiences through South Indian classical music, and as a platform that would connect communities and create transformative experiences through new music, new contexts, and new spaces, and new agendas for music making. So in the last year or so, we have expl ex we've explored new music. We have taken South Indian classical music from yoga spaces to juvenile detention centers, to geriatric homes, and to the familiar Hindu temple courtyard. We've also explored new contexts for music making. We've explored chamber music, we've explored orchestral configurations of sound, we've explored world music configurations of sound and beyond. And we've also explored new agendas of music making. And with the Cultural Diplomacy Project, I wanted to take it up a notch. So the Dialogues with the Divine was conceived as a series of interfaith, intercultural concerts which aim to use sacred music from different world religions and cultures to act as vehicles for transformative experiences and, and, and creating a unified singular experience. The first experiment happened right here on Beacon Street on March 1st at the Temple Ohabei Shalom. I was joined by a Jewish cantor and his congregation, and with several members of my own community. And I sang in Hebrew, and he sang in Sanskrit. And we thematically linked concepts in Judaism and Hinduism, um, both common and contrasting concepts in Judaism and hin in Hinduism. And perhaps the idea was to actually put people who would otherwise have nothing in common in that room, in that space, and provide us a, a safe means to engage with each other's heritage, and to as a, provide a safe means to engage with each other's culture in a meaningful manner. <laughs> and perhaps the highlight of that experience was in, the, in order to incentivize youth, in order to incentivize youth participation in the event, I had trained a bunch of Indian American kids to sing a song in Yiddish. And at the end of the uh, concert, after receiving a standing ovation, a six-year-old came to me and said, thank you, Deepthi. It was cool, and I'm now proud to be an Indian American. And who could imagine that you could teach a Hindu six-year-old kid, a Yiddish song in a familiar South Indian raga, and she would feel free enough to ex take a musical excursion into a different culture and yet feel so connected to her own tradition, to her own identity. And after she walked past, I thought, well, isn't that how we all want to feel? 
isn't that how we all want to experience life? Where our tradition, our culture, is not an obstacle to participating in a multicultural and plural society, but is a wonderful springboard, which offers us many, many tools to participate in a multicultural and plural society. Whether you're singing a piyut in Hebrew, or a kirtan in Hindi, or a spiritual in English, the mindset of prayer is the same. The neuropsychobiology of transcendence, of mindfulness, is the same. And perhaps by harnessing the power of music, we can all learn. Perhaps by harnessing the power of music to elevate our consciousness, we can all learn that maybe we have complicated histories. We may not be able to dissolve all the boundaries on the map. And we may not be able to dissolve all forms of prejudice that we live with. But we can certainly lead with what we want. And we can be the change we want to see. And perhaps by harnessing the power of music in creating this cross-cultural, cultural transmogrification experiences, we can learn that we do not have to be disconnected from each other to truly be connected to the humanity within. Perhaps we can all learn that we do not have to be threatened by each other's diversity to truly connect to the divinity within. Thank you.